good morning, uh, good afternoon, Dr. Zhang. This is our final presentation of the Capstone project. Our project is the COVID-19 virus simulation model. Dr. Zhang, um, I will be going over the executive summary of our presentation. Um, this is just a short rundown of our pres presentation, uh, what it will be about. The object of our, uh, or the name of our project is a COVID-19 virus simulation model. Uh, our main objective was to find the optimal conditions to prevent the spread of COVID in a schoolroom setting as well as a hospital setting. Um, we do this by studying the air ventilation and how it influences transmissibility of the virus. Uh, we will talk about how the virus is transmitted and spread in a room-like setting. Um, next, we'll have the design of the rooms. The classroom and the hospital room settings are going to be explained and how these setups affect the spread of COVID. Um, we will also talk about the research of COVID, what we had to do to find out um, the things to use in our project. Uh, this includes background information of the virus, the size of the particles, as well as uh, the way it is transmitted. Um, programs used in the simulation consisted of ANSYS, space claim, mesh, and fluent. Um, we also used Fusion 360 in our models. Um, each of these programs had a key part in the simulation process, and we will better explain these in our presentation. Um, building and meshing models is a huge part of the simulation process. We will go into more uh, detail about the models and show how they're laid out, the idea um, of the building of the models um, is to do them as realistic as possible. This is done by building and meshing models properly and accurately, um, so the results are as closely to reality as possible. Uh, we'll go into more detail about this in the presentation as well. Last thing is running simulations. That's the most important part of the project. Um, putting everything together that we have, uh, we talk about the simulation and the process we went through to get it, uh, to get the results. So now we will move on to the introduction. So our simulated design project can be divided into two parts. The first one is the creation of the geometry. So different 3D builder software like NCC Space Claim, Fusion 360, and AutoCAD were used for the creation of both the hospital room and the classroom model. So it was very important for the project to have ventilation inlet and the outlet as well for the simulation. And similarly, for the injection of the virus, we also created a human body. And to show the similarity between our project and the uh, real world, we also created several elements like chairs, decks, sofa, and, and a bed in the hospital room. So how the virus transmit. So the next part is the parametric study. So under parametric study, the two factors are explored. The first one is the speed of the coughing. And the second one is the ventilation speed, which is the inlet. And similarly, when the injection speed is kept at a certain value, the airflow speed is changed. And on the other hand, when the airflow speed is kept at a certain value, the injection speed is changed, which can be shown in the figure above. So the next part under the background information, different research and projects have already been published. So, when, so from the research, the first one is the respiratory droplets. So respiratory droplets plays an important part in the transmission of the COVID-19. So when the respiratory droplets stay in the air for hours, it becomes aerosol. So which, which contributes in the transmission of virus. The transmission mode is basically the air which follows certain path line from transmitting from infected person to the healthy person. So the next thing is about the size of the droplets. Size of droplets can vary from person to person, from small droplets to big droplets. So for the project, we chose the average of the small droplets and big droplets, which is 5.2 micrometer, which is the average of both the droplets. So onto the next part is the ventilation. So ventilation plays an important role in the COVID-19 transmission as well. The air change per hour, per hour, which is known as the ACH as well. Several uh, engineering institutes have recommend certain ACH value for the minimum transmission of the COVID virus. So the position of the ventilation also plays an important role in the COVID in the COVID nineteen transmissions. For example, when the ventilation is positioned at the certain position, the concentration of the COVID nineteen particles or the respiratory particles doesn't rise to maximum. Similarly, the speed of the ventilation so that the infected air keeps going out of the room and the new air is circulated, and so there is minimum transmission between 
person to person while speaking coughing and sneezing the project scope and objective so our end goal was obviously to prevent the spread of covid to reduce it um, so we did this by first studying and doing research on the distribution of the virus particles under the effects of air circulation. Uh, next, we moved on to creating a simulation environment to simulate the trajectory of the virus particles inside a given domain. Um, next, we went to conduct the parametric study case. Um, the parametric study case, we did that to explore the relation and impact as well in a well-ventilated room on uh, reducing the spread of the virus. Um, investigating the effects of changing the AC input velocity and coughing velocity. So this was just showing how changing the velocity and the airflow in the room and how it affects on the amount of escaped particles. So this is changing the um, speed and the velocity of the air. Next, we moved on to changing where the uh, AC vents were. So changing the configuration of the vents, um, their placements to see how that affected the um, escaped particles. Then the last thing we did, putting everything all together, finding the optimal setup, the conditions, the, the vent placements, everything all together, finding the most optimal thing to uh, have the most escaped particles. So COVID virus scenario lab style classroom setting. Um, this is just going to show the setup of what we had for the classroom model. Um, as you can see, this is our model right here. It represents a classroom like setting. Uh, the dimensions of the room was 24 by 16 by 12. Uh, as you can see, there are three tables, five chairs, and a person sitting in front or standing in front of the um, so-called teacher's table. Uh, as you can see, there's two vents on top and a vent on the back. What we did was change which vent was being used. We only used one inlet at a time and one outlet, but moving those configurations around, switching them up is what uh, our main thing was. Uh, the mesh room. So meshing is a very important part. It allows us to know the accuracy um, in our simulations. So the best thing to do is have a very fine mesh, um, but not too fine to where the simulation can't be run and it throws an error. So um, this was our end result on the meshing of the room. Next part, I'm going to talk about the project setup, how we set up the simulation and how we can make the simulation as real as possible. On the left, you can see the properties of the injection we use. In, the, in this experiment, we want to simulate a person who is coughing intensely in 0 0.5 seconds. We put in five injections. Each injection has a flow rate of 1.5 e to the negative 11. And as we have discussed in the background, we are simulate the water droplet from the saliva of the when the person is coughing. We are not as uh, simulate the variance of the virus itself. So when we put in the injection, the orientation of injection is perpendicular to the injected phase. On the right, some properties of the simulations and some other binary condition. I'm gonna talk about one of the most important thing we're gonna use is the reported monitors. In here, we use two kinds of uh, monitor. One is called the escape mask and one is called the mask in the domain. Uh, the escape mask monitor is put uh, at the position of the outlet to record the uh, mask escaped uh, over time. The total time of the simulation is 16 seconds with the number of time step is 800 and each time step is 0 0.02 seconds. It is also important to set the condition of the wall to trap and the condition of the outlet to escape to ensure that the result is correct. Uh, move on to the next thing. We have two scenarios, but it follows the same method. First of all, like I said before, we study the escape mask. We put a monitor at the outlet to record the escape mask. Uh, we, uh, besides the original setup, we, we create several uh, AC vent configuration. And uh, in each setup, we will apply the same condition of AC speed and coughing speed. At the end of the simulation, which setup has the better percentage of escape mass will be chosen for further investigation. 
as you can see in step number three and number four, there will be 16 case of the original setup and 16 case of the better setup or the chosen setup. All right, this is the summary of the results. So first of all, this is the original setup. Like I said before, the inlet is on the ceiling. The outlet is on the right wall. And from that, we create four more different config configuration. One, two, three, four. And we apply the same condition, like everything is the same except the position of the inlet and the outlet. And we run four different, sim uh, five different simulation. This is the result we have. As you can see, uh, the set setup number three is the best one since it has the highest percentage of escape mass. So we choose that setup for further uh, simulation. This is the result after 32 case of simulation. There are a lot of numbers, but I'm just grab uh, some of them to do the some data analysis. Whenever we keep the coughing speed constant, we double the AC speed. Uh, there is an increase of 1.8 times of the escape mass. Whenever we keep the AC speed constant and we double the coughing speed, there's an increase of 1.2 times of the escape mass. As you can also see in the previous compar comparison, if we change the configuration, the percentage of escape mass also change. And Matthew will uh, make it more clear for us. Matthew? Matthew, your mic's not on. Sorry about that. Hello, my name is Matthew Taylor and I will be presenting the uh, conclusions for the classroom portion of our project. As previously mentioned, the two AC orientations tested are case A, the original setup, including a ceiling inlet and an outlet placed on the wall, and case B, the setup with the highest scoring escape mass percentage from previous testing that has both the inlet and outlet positioned on the ceiling. Video animations of these AC orientations can be seen here. The waving lines depict the path lines of air as they move from the inlet to the outlet, colored by their velocities. And the small dots represent the COVID-19 positive aerosol particles and are colored by time pass since injection. After refining various, after refining data, various plots were produced in order to find underlying trends. This figure plots the average escape mass for each case versus the AC inlet velocity. There are two major takeaways from this graph. Number one, case B, the hypothetical best AC orientation, outscores the original setup in removing the aerosol particles at every AC velocity. This means our predictions were correct in that case B would outperform the original AC orientation. This also supports our theory that AC effectiveness on COVID transport can be increased by particular vent location. The second major takeaway, AC velocity and escape mass percentage have a positive correlation. This shouldn't be surprising, but mass escape seems to be more dependent on AC velocity than vent orientation between these two cases. After analyzing further, we can see that not only does escape mass increase with AC velocity, but the rate at which the superior vent orientation outperforms the other also increases with AC velocity. So this next plot shows the escape mass averaged by AC speed versus call velocity. An increase in call speed seems to lead in an increase in escape mass but call speed is uncontrollable, so this doesn't mean much. But what is more important is that no matter the call velocity, the average escape mass was greater for every increase in AC velocity. So this is another verification of a positive correlation between escape mass and AC velocity. Our last figure plots escape mass versus AC velocities at the maximum and minimum cough speeds for both cases. So this is all four cases. 
In the figure, we can see more evidence of escape mass increasing with AC velocity. In another verification of our hypothetical best AC orientation, trumping the original. Case B actually outperforms case A in every test except one. Here, where AC velocity is three meters per second. But why would it fail here? Why would it fail at the lowest tested AC velocity? And the answer is because AC effectiveness of reducing COVID transport depends far more on AC velocity than it does vent orientation. There's more verification of this shown again in the growing difference in effectiveness between the two cases as velocity increases. So pulling this all together, the design of the AC system is a very important factor to consider when faced with the goal of building a more COVID-friendly environment. Selecting the correct positions for the inlet and outlet vents can make a, make a substantial difference in the system's ability to reduce COVID transport. But designing the system to run at the ideal inlet velocity is really the key in mechanically reducing the spread of the virus. And according to our data, not only will increasing the AC velocity increase the effectiveness by more than proper vent placement alone, but it will actually increase the rate at which a better vent placement will boost effectiveness. So in conclusion, our results verify that by optimizing velocity and vent location in mechanical ventilation design, COVID transmissions can realistically be reduced in the classroom. Our goal in this project was to discover more about how COVID is transported in order to provide knowledge that can help keep our schools and hospitals safe. And I really feel that we accomplished this goal by proving with evidence that COVID transmissions can be mechanically reduced indoors. Now, uh, Bippen will talk about the uh, solutions for the hospital case. The second half of the project focuses on the virus simulation in the hospital ventilation room. As my teammate Hugh already explained the boundary condition and the software setup, and uh, it is similar to that of the classroom model, I'll just skip the setup section. While talking about the room setup, the hospital room dimension is 23 by 23 by 12 feet, with one main airflow inlet from AC on the wall and one outlet vent on the opposite wall. As seen on the slide, the room is occupied with the simple couch, a bed model with a COVID infected person lying on it, the bed model is designed in a way that the cough droppers from the patient mouth will be released upright along the outlet vent during the coughing. While talking about the methods, I used a similar approach of investigating the maximum particle emission as that of the classroom model. For that, I created seven different geometries with different position of inlet and outlet vent, keeping the particle injection vent location constant. Here, patient mouth is considered as the virus particle injection vent. As already mentioned in the uh, introduction section, the coughing velocity is not constant and varies from person to person. So I took the average as 10 meter per second for the coughing velocity and eight meter per second for the AC velocity and ran our trial cases on all seven rooms configuration to select the best one that is the maximum particle emission out of the room. From the table on the slide, we can see that Set of seven is maximum particle emission, that is 58.8%. The reason is the alignment of the inlet and outlet vent. If we see the set of seven, the selected geometry, the inlet and the outlet vent are placed on the wall opposite to each other at the same height. And the virus particles are released upright from the passive mouth, for which the maximum particles are swept away along the airflow path from the AC through the outlet vent. This can be visualized further on the next slides. Figure one shows the path lines of the airflow from AC vent in the room. The green color uh, contour represents the high velocity region, which is along the inlet and outlet vent. And the blue color represents the low velocity region in the room. Similarly, figure two shows the velocity vector of the passant, uh, velocity vector of the particles where red color represents the region with the high velocity of the virus particles and around the outlet vent and the green with the low velocity in the room. 
this illustration uh, supports the set of seven that we choose for the investigation. Figure one and two represents the concentration of the virus particles after injection in the room at one second and 16 seconds respectively. As the time period increases, more particles are swept away from the outlet vent at the and at the end of 16 seconds, only 42% of the particles remain in the room. This is demonstrated by the short animation on this slide. This short animation shows that the virus particles released from the patient mouth during cough. As mentioned above in the geometry section, the particles are released upright from the mouth near the outlet vent. Most of the particles are swept away through the outlet vent in the very short period of time. The generated graph and the results from the output file shows 58.8% of the particle escaped the domain by the end of 16 seconds. After successfully running the trial cases, we ran 12 more cases with different inlet and uh, injection velocities to see its effect on the particle emission. Table on the slide shows the outcome of the 12 cases. The table clearly shows that the velocities as the velocity increases, the rate of the particle emissions, uh, the rate of uh, particle emission also increases from the top to bottom and vice versa. In the table, we can see that even though case 12 uh, shows the emission rate of 68% of the particles, it is hard to maintain the injection speed of 15 meter per second and is a way higher than the average velocity. So case eight with AC velocity of eight meter per second and injection velocity of 10 meter per second, that is set of seven, is a more phys feasible outcome of the hospital room simulation. Thank you. COVID transmissions can realistically be reduced indoors with the implication of optimized AC system velocity and vent location in the mechanical ventilation design process. Our project provides evidence of this. Now, our calculations were based off of several assumptions in order to reduce the simulation complexity, but these unaccounted for errors such as humidity and temperature have almost no effect on relative AC effectiveness at removing the particles. And they have much more effect on how the particles settle in their lifespan on surfaces. So our data is valid and usable. This project has real importance because this is us doing our part as engineers to help fight the spread of this virus. Thank you.